Okay, I'm here with Ben Einstein, the founder of Bolt. Yeah. Tell us about Bolt. Sure, so uh, again, seed stage investment firm uh, focusing entirely on hardware companies. So every company that we work with is building some physical thing. And as part of the investment that we make, we spend a ton of time, energy, and resources on helping them actually build that product, which is very different than building a typical software company. And so we have a full staff of engineers, uh, mechanical engineering, uh, electrical engineering, embedded systems development, industrial design, and then someone who helps build prototypes, a full shop that uh, companies can use. And I would say it was like a, a dream toy, the yeah, ultimate do-it-yourself It's pretty cool. Um, we're really lucky to have a space that we can actually use to make stuff. Um, but that comes out of the fact that I just, that's my DNA is just making things. That's mm -hmm. what I am here doing. Um, and this is a really good way for me to make a lot of things uh, that are really <laughs> interesting really fast. Uh, and so, and so th this came out of frustration from the product design world. Um, and so many people are familiar with companies like IDEO or mm -hmm. uh, here in Boston's Continuum is very well known or Altitude, uh, Frog Design, Smart Design, there's a bunch of them. And these companies are all service businesses that are hired by you know Fortune 500 companies to design uh, to design new products. And that relationship is uh, very interesting. You get to work on lots of different things. It's very exciting and creative, and um, you know you get to uh, you get to move around a lot, which is fun. Uh, but you have this very toxic relationship, which is based around money. Uh, that says um, you know we we built this product. It's pretty good, um, but we want to make a couple changes. You know it's going to cost you money to do that. And so you solve for mediocrity. Um, and it's a very frustrating thing. As a creative person, you want to have free reign, basically, to build a great product. And so Bolt was designed from the ground up to be this very, um, very, uh, very aligned sort of design consultancy. That was like the initial premise. Um, and uh, we work exclusively on an equity basis, and we invest capital as a big part of our business. Um, but a ton of the reason that people take money from us for someone else is all of the focus on building the product in the company. And so it's very, it's not, you know, a mentor once a week that's going to talk you through a business plan. It is sitting on the ground, you know, in front of a CAD program describing exactly how a part should be designed for injection molding and actually sitting there and doing it. Um, and so it's a very different relationship than a typical venture firm or incubator accelerator, whatever category people put us into. It sounds, uh, and there's a similar firm in a sense for the software side, it would be Blade. So Paul English is, they're sitting down, Sure. you know, I'm not going to use the word incubating, but I think yeah. that's the correct term in yeah. use of it, of having these, uh, these firms staying with the same mentors and people. Yeah. Um, what actually brought me in today as I was walking by, cool. and I saw Warren Katz yeah. talking like that, and yeah. I know Will Herman's yeah, here. Yeah, 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 you've, yeah. you've got the best of the best. We have this awesome crew of people that we're really pumped about, and many of them are either, if they're not you know, hardware entrepreneurs, which many of them are, they have a shop in their garage, they love like they built their own house, or they have some connection to making things. Uh, which is surprisingly common. You learn this about a lot of people, and I. One of the things when I was raising the first fund that I got from individuals was feedback I heard all the time. Was yeah, you know, I, when I was at MIT, I was an electrical engineer, and I was like totally in love with making circuits and like all this stuff. And then everybody just started doing software, and so I got you know my co my company was a software company, but I loved at home. I was you know hacking on Arduinos, and I had a shop, and I was making cabinets or whatever. And so you have this very strong entrepreneurial connection to physical things. And we're seeing this, you know, at a very high level, we're seeing a renaissance of that in a lot of ways. And so this was a place that was designed, I think, pretty uniquely to help companies do that. But it attracts all these people that you wouldn't expect that. They're like, oh, this is really cool. Um, and, and in order to be a mentor here, you have to be able to have uh, already modified your lawnmower to 55 <laughs> sure, miles an yeah. hour. Because you would ride on it like a sports car. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not super strict about anything like that, but it just tends to be, so much of this is about community, building people that really, care and connect about similar things. And um, and so we have probably 95% of our investors are, they care about physical things and, mm. you know, very deeply. Um, and and so it's a, it's a, it's enjoyable for people here to like just hang out because they're people that have similar belief systems and it works well. So how much, what, what is your vision for growth, number of teams that you're going to have anytime? You'll never have more than two teams, you'll have more than 50 teams. You're... Yeah, it's, uh, the growth stuff is really challenging for any, any very hands-on space like this. So, you know, like we spend a lot of time talking to like Y Combinator and, and other sort of like programs that have this, you know, it's all about bandwidth. It's all about, okay, we want, we see 5,000 companies every six months. We want to do, you know, 100 deals or whatever. 
Um, and that just doesn't work for us because we, um, we believe in picking a couple of winners and spending a ton of time and energy focusing on those companies for a year, two years, 10 years, whatever it takes. Uh, and so we have companies that come back, you know, fly back from LA and do design reviews because they, they find it useful. Um, and so that is, uh, again, it's very atypical for someone doing this kind of stuff. But it's, it's um, I don't see it actually getting much larger in terms of the number of companies in a given period of time because it's very hard to manage this stuff quality, with quality in mind. Uh, so I imagine we do, we do about, you know, 10 to 12 investments per year. Mm -hmm. I imagine that will stay relatively similar going forward. Does, we, that, does that mean there are... Uh, 10 companies here at any one time, there's always one dropping out and another one comes in? How do we you don't have any specific requirements for companies moving here. So we have a couple companies that actually never moved in here. Um, they just come in all the time and work with our team or whatever. Um, and so... But they would be idiots not to be in Boston to be able to access that's right. these. That's right. It, it just doesn't make sense for right. them. Um, but we have um, we have one company that's in San Francisco. They, they you know they were like, oh, we'll come out in the beginning for a month or two, and then we'll work remotely. And it turned into a month or two, turned into like three, turned into four. Mm -hmm. um, and so they just they really I think they genuinely value the time. Um, and I think that's been useful for them. Well, it's still early. There must be some type of up or out or graduation process. Have you come to grips with that, or how do you think? What usually happens is companies get too big, and so mm -hmm. they get once they get past you know eight, nine, ten people, it just becomes they kind of like push themselves out right it's like this is uncomfortable for me to take these four desks here and like cram everybody in here and so they go get their own space um, and that happens with that's happened with let's see about five companies so far um, and in a year that a year and two months or whatever it's been that's pretty successful i think we we feel pretty good about that well let's take a look at that space sure happy to show you sort of like general um, office space. So uh, Bolt is divided into two floors. The top floor is uh, sort of common area and, and, and office space that the companies can use. A lot of meeting rooms and the typical things that you would find in like a co-working space or an incubator. Um, open seating for all the companies and there's about seven rooms around the space that people can use. But all the cool stuff is down in the shop. Yeah, so the the um, the bottom floor here is uh, is really focused on sh uh, prototyping, and so everything here that we have is designed to build ones and twos and threes of things. This is not manufacturing or large production or anything like that. Uh, and so the middle area that you see here is all um, is all sort of dedicated team space that companies get in addition to their space upstairs. They have access to um, you know a, a, a workbench setup where they can kind of make a mess, as we say. Um, and then there's about uh, four or five little sort of sectional areas that. Have specific focuses in terms of technology. So, um, I haven't seen a Bridgeport working in a while. Yeah, well, there's one here. There's actually two here. Um, and so we have uh, a pair of milling machines here. These are old Bridgeports. They have a great story behind them, actually. That sat next to each other in a tool and die shop in Bridgeport, Connecticut, for 60 years. Um, it was good to see they're still together. Yeah, they're great. Uh, and then we have a big. Uh, we're gonna have to walk here a little bit. We have a big, uh, big engine lathe. We're gonna do a little bit of filming here, Jeremy. Um, and so this is, uh, this is uh, to make radially symmetric parts, which are very useful for certain kinds of things, axles and stuff. Um, and then this is, a, this is a CNC milling machine, um, which is sort of the modern equivalent of a bridge port. Uh, and so this takes um, you know, big hunks of uh, aluminum and steel and plastic and carves them out using a computer program versus by hand, which I is... I it a 3D eraser instead of a 3D printer. Sure, that's a great way to put it. It's like a sculpting machine. Um, and then a lot of our companies have electronics. And so uh, this room is sort of full of all of the electronic things. Um, so oscilloscopes and function generators and spectrum analyzers and all the things that are used to make circuit boards, um, which is a big part of the way most of these products work. Uh, lots of standard components and wire and all kinds of other things. <laughs> we had to get a, I'll maybe do a snap for that. Classic. <laughs> and, um, and this is uh, by some, the most interesting room. This is uh, what we call rapid prototyping. And so this covers um, 3D printing, which is something that people talk uh, very often about, uh, which has uh, been around for a long time, really useful for prototyping. Um, we cover uh, pretty high-end printing here. So we have a, what's called a laser cutter down here. Um, and this does flat material, so sheets of acrylic and plastic and um, wood and uh, you know, fiberboard and um, glass and metal and whatever. Uh, and then this, uh, these two printers here are FDM machines, so this is, um, this is a really uh, sort of quick and easy and cheap uh, machine, and this is the sort of the Ferrari of 3D printing. And someone's um, been 
playing their own little... Yeah, so uh, these are all test parts that, um, that companies often recommend. Um, uh, and this is this is a really high-end uh, 3D printer that's built by the company that bought MakerBot, that you, right. you may know. It's Stratasys, right? Uh, yes, that's right. And, and this, this is, is Form Labs, which this was is, the... Uh, this is Form Labs, yeah. I'm going to say they were the runner-up in the beauty contest in that movie about... Uh, I think they were the winner of oh, of, of that of that movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have a. They, were, a, they stay the purists. Yes, that's right, and they're doing quite well there. You know, they're they're based here in uh, in Somerville, and uh, I think they're up to about 100 people now. So they're they're doing great. Um, and we we had uh, one of the earliest printers. This is actually a new one, but we've had a handful of them. So this is where all the 3D printing happens. And well, we're gonna get a sound of beakers. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is one of our companies is a, is a wine startup, and wow. so they're doing real sort of degradation and testing of wine, um, which is sometimes more organized than this. But you can sort of see little wine beakers in there. <laughs> and then the last sort of like main functional area here is um, wood shop. Is yeah, we call this a model making, and so this covers um, making sort of rough prototypes of things that are not really designed to be super functional, but are really useful in assessing whether something's um, going to work or look good. And so this is um, a bandsaw. This is a big vacuum former. This makes uh, plastic molds. So this is like a little um, sort of computer mouse um, that comes off of a of a machine like this. Um, this is actually a piece of testing equipment that allows us to do uh, temperature cycling. We have one of our um, products companies in there, or one of our company's products in there, sorry. And this is a weather system, and so this is being cycled through very intense heat and, and humidity cycles. And so we can actually make sure that the product is uh, accurately reflecting all that stuff that's happening and remains, remains uh, precise. Um, and let's see, we have uh, saws and yeah. Drill presses, this is a sandblast cabinet, uh, this is a cleaning system for our 3D printed parts and a big drill press. Well, what I think is most uh, impressive here actually is the cleanliness of the place. You see all the dust collection systems. You may argue about a little bit. I've been in a lot of factories <laughs> and they don't look like this. So obviously we keep the clean floors here. That's right. That's right. Our, uh, a clean floor is a clean mind. Ben, thank you so much and good luck. Thank you.